This is the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. We have assembled the world's finest sports and trivia dorks to prove once and for all that we are just as bad at this as we were at sports. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast, sports trivia for those of us who rode the pine. I'm your host, David, and today's game will feature the Bench Warmer team of Eric Ede and Scott versus the team of Dan and head coach to our Patreon team, Philip Sanford. Let's start with Philip. It's, uh, it's been a while since you've been on, so I want to remind us a little bit about who you are, your team allegiances, and I don't know, any road races you've run recently? So, uh, uh, Philip Sanford, I am I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, let see, team allegiances, I'll, I'll lead off with the uh, – the one team no we could could remember during uh one of the uh uh one of the list questions uh charlotte fc uh my wife and i are proud season ticket holders with nice. uh with them we have, nice. have been since since day one uh they're, they're probably the ones i've watched like the most right now um uh, um also um uh everton fc somehow managed to avoid relegation uh this season that was by the skin of their teeth um uh, um but yeah, other than that, um, the the uh, Seton Hall basketball, which will likely be in last place in, in the Big East next year, that things are not looking too good for the Pirates. So, are, are they getting relegated um, out of the Big East? No, this. Uh, if there was relegation, they they would they would be uh, getting relegated next year. They they have a very very thin roster. I'll I'll just put it that way. There's <laughs> um, not not too many players on the roster this year. That. Players taking full advantage of the uh, the free transfer rules and yeah, uh, yeah. and that now now a lot coming back to uh, <laughs> to Seton Hall so uh, we'll we'll see how that how that pans out next year if if we are even able to to field a full roster but uh but yeah and then in terms of races I was back up in my hometown Toledo Ohio did a half marathon there in nice. April and um, they call that the Glass I City mean, one right yeah gla- the gla- Glass City Marathon I've, I've yeah. been there yes. <laughs> Um, and then the, um, and then, then this summer I'm doing something actually much, much different for the first time in gosh, since I was 18 years old, I will be doing competitive track racing, which is going to be, uh, interesting. So wow. I'll be doing, um, not, not sure exactly which events, but probably the 1600, probably at, at or all four of the meets and then maybe mix in like a 400 meter rate run or a 800 wow. meter run in there as well. Nice. Wow, yeah. you'll have to you'll have to keep us posted on how you're doing. All right, so yeah, Dan, it'll be it'll be sore. That, that, that's all, that, that's, that, how, that's how you're doing. Very, you'll very be very sore. Yeah, yeah, perfect. All right, Dan, why don't you tell us about your road races and a, and a team name too? Yeah, um, Locust, North Carolina, Vikings, Twins, <laughs> yeah, Wolves, yeah, yeah, Wild, all the <laughs> Seattle teams because I'm a lifelong Seattle fan. Right, of um, course. Melbourne Demons who are tanking right now. Um, yeah. All of that stuff. Uh, whatever Philip and I are together on a team, we tend to get a, a um, Seinfeld reference as our team name. So we're just going to go directly ahead with that. And we are going to be Sagman, Bennett, Robbins, Oppenheim, and Taft. Right. That's not going to be at all painful for me to say. All right. The, the, the stakeout. Right. Yep, the stakeout is the name of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Maybe that's a better name, the stakeout. Okay. Scott, how you doing tonight? Good. Eric? <laughs> wow you guys are quick is that all you got anybody want i was told game? i was i was told to be efficient yeah that's that's especially efficient for you that's really well, that's really good yeah and, and since we're being efficient i won't mention all the the road races i am about to take part in <laughs> anything that gets them out of the area i i said road races not road rages they're very different are, you do know are they, are they? i think i knew he was going to say that all right eric what's your team name um so uh uh, my kids have recently watched the Super Mario Brothers movie, and if you've not watched it, I it's it's awesome. Um, a lot of you know Easter eggs. So, um, the past week, anytime words are not leaving my mouth, the Peaches song is in my head. So, if you've not heard it, I have not. Billions heard it, of so. Peaches, Peaches for free. No, okay. no, no. If you so, I'm guessing no one's heard it here. So, oh, take no. take up take no. a minute and and and. <laughs> Because the song's only a minute. So our team name today is going to be uh, Peaches, 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 Peaches. I love you. So, so, so I take it this is not the Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo movie. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Dennis Hopper is not in this movie. 
no, no, Captain Lou Albano. All right. So we've got, oh my gosh, we've got Sagman, Bennett, Robbins, Oppenheim, and Taft versus Peaches, 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 Peaches. I love you. I lost track of how many Peaches uh, that was. This is, on, I can tell you. This is going to be a crazy efficient game. All right, let's get this going. Dan, we'll kick it over to you for the rules. The game will consist of four quarters of play, each with different trivia style. The styles of quarters one through three will change from show to show, and I will explain them as we go along. Like any good sporting event, we will have a halftime show after the second quarter with entertainment questions. And in the fourth quarter, our teams will wager from their points accumulated to see who are today's clipboard captains to be honored like the true bench warmers they are. All right, let's get this game underway. You're welcome. It's six peaches, David. Six. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Just a second. Here we go. Today's first quarter is going to be sporting haikus. Sporting haikus. For this quarter, there will be four questions in haiku form. Each question is worth 25 points. Question number one of Sporting Haikus. We'll check it. Yeah, I bet you will. Oh, sorry. Uniform number, Koufax, Carlton, McCordy, Dr. J on Nets. David, we're officially checked in. All right. Peaches, 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 yada, yada, yada. Hey, uh, uh, no, I need you to say it all the times because oh, uh, there'll be music dubbed in. Oh, for Pete's sake. Or for Peach's sake. All right. Peaches, 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 peaches. I love you has checked in. <laughs> Other team, you could talk it out. Boy, am I going to get tired. I'm already tired. I, I was looking for the 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 question to get sent over to me, and before that got sent over to me, Philip had already answered it. So, <laughs> so. yeah, I I know for a fact Sandy Koufax was uh, number thirty two, and I was pretty sure that was Doctor J's number before he took on the more famous number with the uh, with the Sixers. So he went thir- uh, thirty two. Okay, and peaches, 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 peaches. I love you. What'd you have? I, I'm thinking we don't have the same answer, so that's weird. Carlton Fisk, I thought it was 27, so we said 27. Well, Carlton Fisk might have been. This is Steve Carlton. Read the question. Oh, <laughs> this is a Carlton. As in doing the Carlton. Right. Carlton Banks, yeah. The correct answer is 32. Yes, that was Sandy Koufax, Steve Carlton, Devin McCourty, and Dr. J on the Nets. Is... Protest. What, what? Why? I only have so many syllables. He... You didn't say which McCordy, so uh, we that's were really true. thrown off. Uh, yeah, that's not my problem. Yeah, other more famous wow. uh, 32s. Right, uh, appeal denied. Magic Johnson, Jim Brown, RIP, uh, Carl Malone, etc. All right, question number two. Uniform number, Jolton Joe and Nick Lidstrom, Bench, Bagwell, and Brett. Check in. Unless it's right. like another Lidstrom that nobody's ever heard of. I wrote Nick Lidstrom. I said Nick Lidstrom. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Backstrom? Is that, is that what that says? Of the Backstrom boys? Okay. So, Peaches, 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 I love you. Has checked in. By the time I say that, the time is going to go by. Law Firm, what you got? It's um, number five, right? Ruth was Ruth was three. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I'm I'm off from what I was thinking with, with my, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah. and then fa- famously, Mantle was seven. Good yes. name for a baby name. So, yeah, it's uh, we'll check in five. All right. And Peaches, 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 I love you. Uh, Nick Lidstrom, war number five. Both teams uh, are correct and will be receiving points. Well done. Yep. Yeah, I threw in some hockey references for you. Eat. Get used to it. So, all right. Question number three. Some, is... one. Some, <laughs> some. Question, just... number... All right. Question number three. Uniform number, Bernard King, Rashid, Rock Reigns, plus Marty Brodeur. Let me check in. All right. Peaches, Peaches, et cetera, has checked in. Law firm, it's yours. Yeah. So, so Dan, I'm I'm pretty sure this is 30. Uh, I can picture both Rashid, pre-Pistons, and uh, Bernard King and Brodeur at, with 30. Yeah, I can see, I can see uh, King with 30 for sure. So yeah, yeah, we can go with that. All right. And Peaches Peaches, what'd you have? Am I embarrassed? I thought it was Billy Jean King. So we went with 30. 
Nice. Pretty sure Billie Jean King didn't have a number. Oh, all right. Uh, Sorry. So, all right. Well done. Flying through these. Question four. Uniform number, Bob Gibson and Garrett Cole, Pedro Martinez. Uh, David, we're going to efficiently check in. All right. Peaches, 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 peaches. I love you. Has checked in. It must be really funny for him to hear me say that. I don't know the song at all. But oh, anyway. just wait. All right. <laughs> It'll never get out of my head again. And Law Firm, what you yeah, got? That's, that, that's Pedro's number, right? Yeah. 45 is yeah, Pedro? For, yeah, with the, especially with the Expos and Red Sox. I think he may – I'm not sure about uh, Mets and Phillies. I, I think for Phillies, he was not that. But I, I, this is – I know he really cares about when he played for the Phillies. But, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that Bob Gibson was 45. Okay. Okay. I have no idea, Garrett Cole. I don't really care. Um, yeah. All right. We'll 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 check in 45. Okay. All right. And Peaches, guys, what you got? It's 45. It is 45. Yeah. And I don't care about Pedro once he left the Red Sox either. And he didn't wear 45 the whole time. I meant to put in the caveat at the beginning that some of these guys actually wore different numbers, but it was the, the numbers that they were most famous for and the only one that would overlap. So after the first quarter, our teams are doing off to a pretty fast and good start. Sagman, Bennett, Robbins, Oppenheim, and Taft are at 100 and trailing just behind. Peaches, 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 peaches. I love you at 75 points. Thanks to eating one question. We wanted to let you know that we are on Patreon if you'd be interested in supporting us financially. Your contributions will be used to help us cover the costs that it takes to bring you the high-quality sports trivia that you have come to expect from us. There are also some great perks that come with the Patreon membership to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast, including bonus episodes and Benchwarmers swag. You can find us at patreon.com slash Benchwarmers TP. Thanks. Okay, and that will bring us to our second quarter, which will be The Missing Link. The Missing Link. This quarter will consist of five questions with theme-linked answers. The teams will attempt to answer the questions and guess the theme. Each question is worth 20 points. If a team checks in first via chat to the host with the correct theme before the fifth question, they will earn 100 points. The other team can still earn 50 points with the correct theme guess. If neither team has checked in with the correct theme before the fifth question, each team can earn 50 points with the correct answer to the theme after the fifth question. Question number one of our missing link. Iowa State quarterback drafted in the fourth round by Washington in 2001. In his 12-year career, he played for five different teams. Washington, Miami, Houston, Minnesota, New York Giants, back to Miami, and back to Minnesota. In those 12 years, he only started 12 games, 10 of which came with the Texans. We're checked in. All right. Peaches, 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 et cetera. Has checked in. Sagman, Bennett, Robbins, Oppenheim, and Taft. What you got? Minnesota so, twice. The the one the one guy that I know started for a season with the, the Texans, and this is like part of the random list of quarterbacks. And this is the most random one I can think of that I know for sure started like a season, which I, I count 10 games be starting for a season. Is uh, Sage Rosenfels? Yep, that's it. Then yeah. that's it. Okay, that's definitely it. Because I and I, I remember him. He was with at least with Miami. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm not. He, he was he was with Minnesota twice. You okay. say that. Yep. Yeah, we can check check in Sage Rosenfels. All right, and Peaches. Yeah, I mean, you gave Eric and I a sort of draft question. So I didn't think we were going to struggle with this one. It's memory. Like it's one of those Mandela effect things that he started a lot more for Miami, even though he didn't, but yeah, we checked in with Sage Rosenfels. Watching one game of Sage Rosenfels feels like an entire season. So <laughs> that's fair. All right. Well, both teams are receiving points. Yeah. I, I, I was surprised when I looked that up and he'd only started 12 games. I mean, I, I think you're probably right, Eric, that there's, there's some effect with that, but I remember in my head that he, if you would ask me how many games he started, I would have doubled that number in my head. So yeah, that's I'm, called the that's called the Peterman effect. When, <laughs> Jay when Peterman? one game is a struggle. Oh. Nope. Different one that only threw interceptions. Right, exactly. All right. Question number number two of our missing link. Before the start of the 2000 season, this former first round quarterback appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated with the headline, quote, back from the brink. He then started 0 and 4 and went one and nine in his 10 starts that year. 
We can check that in. All right. Peaches is checked in. Law firm, you can talk it out. Do you have anything on Carrie, this? Uh, Carrie Collins, maybe? Uh, what was the year? 2000. 2000. Back from the brink. Oh, brink. Um, 0 and 4, 1 and 9. Is this Ryan Leaf? Did he make it to 2000? Back. Okay. Came back. Yeah, because he was in 97s when he was drafted. So I, I guess he definitely could have made it 2000. And 0 and 4 or 1 and 9 would make make sense. Yeah. I was thinking, I know, I know in early in his career, Kerry Collins with the, um, with the Panthers was, uh, yeah, no, was a known party animal, uh, that definitely impacted yeah. his, uh, his on field play. Uh, but yeah, Ryan Leaf, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So like came back from, you know, yeah. Um, I have a hunch on this if we can do that. Okay. All right. We're going to check in, uh, Ryan Leaf. Okay, and the Peaches guys. Uh, I had this, it's back when magazines were still a thing. I had a, a Sports Illustrated um, subscription, and I just had to think for a second, and uh, it was Ryan Leaf. Both teams are receiving points. Yeah, I was reading a little bit about Ryan Leaf and what he's been up to. Apparently he was, I don't know if he still is, but he was a financial advisor for a while, and I was just picturing, like, I can't imagine many people I would less like to give my money to than Ryan Leaf. But anyway, all right. Our theme-linked answers thus far are Sage Rosenfels and Ryan Leaf. Question number three. He holds the NHL coaching records for most wins in league history, most playoff wins in Stanley Cup history, and most Stanley Cups in coaching history. Yeah, all right, we can, Scott, we can check in. It's hockey, I do, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're telling Scott you could check in or you're telling me you could check in? Both. Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, the PGs guys have checked in. Hockey question, not surprising. Law firm, it's you. I'm I'm pretty positive this is Scotty Bowman, which is not what I wanted to hear. Um, <laughs> I want to be talked out of it, but I don't think I can. He coached for such a long time, and then he won a bunch of cups with two different franchises. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, and and you know, hockey's not my strong suit, but that's that, that that's it. I'm I'm almost positive mm-hmm. that's it. So. All right, we'll uh, we'll check in Scotty Bowman. All right, and Eric, uh, it's Scotty Bowman. It is, in fact, Scotty Bowman. Yeah, I, 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 for some reason, I knew he was prolific. I didn't realize that he coached for forever. I mean, he coached forever. He must have gone straight from, like, straight off the ice and in, into the, you know, onto the bench as a coach. But anyway, all right, we have themed linked answers of Sage Rosenfels, Ryan Leaf, and Scotty Bowman. Question four of Missing Link. From Wikipedia, shoes that extend slightly over the wearer's ankle, commonly used for sports, especially basketball. Examples include Converse All-Stars, Nike Air Forces, Reebok Freestyle, and the Nike Air Yeezy. Yeah, we can check in. All right, the law firm has checked in. So in a rare occurrence, the Peaches team gets a chance to talk this out. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I want to see it. I'm so shell-shocked from David saying Yeezy. (laughs) I I can't really... (laughs) Slightly over the wear's ankle, Air Forces Reebok freestyle. I had one of these. I had some Air Forces back in the day. It has. To, it's. I, I don't think there's anything to talk about. It. Got some, uh, oh, it's it's high tops. It's got to be high tops, right? <laughs> I can't. And that gives me an idea. All right, so we're gonna check in high tops. All right, and the law firm. What did you guys have? Yeah, it's high tops. Okay, both teams are receiving points. And our themed linked answers thus far are Sage Rosenfels, Ryan Leaf, Scotty Bowman, and High Tops. I'm now going to move on to question five. Question five of our missing link. Used as a term for the second tier of a sports stadium, the term is thought to come from the term for top level of the hull of a large boat. We'll We'll, check in. We'll check in. (laughs) All right. Peaches guys have checked in. Law firm. Yeah, upper deck. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say you left out one of the probably the urban dictionary uh, definition oh, of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was I was wondering how he was going to it's upper deck. Okay. And the Peaches guys? I was partial to action packed, but yeah, we went with um upper deck. Both teams are receiving points. Well done. Okay, so our themed linked answers are Sage Rosenfels, Brian Leaf, Scotty Bowman, High Tops, and Upper Deck. One team 
submitted a guess very early on, but unfortunately, I think they jumped the gun. And as a result, the other team is actually getting the full points in somewhat of an upset. So, Eric Ede, would you like to share what your theme link topic is? First, Scott sent spices, but it was too early after Sage. So then we had, what was the second one? Leaf. Ryan Leaf. Yeah. 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 So then I thought maybe it was, uh, you know, ingredients in breakfast sausage. But uh, <laughs> after we, we waited and then eventually we checked in with uh, trading cards companies, I guess. And that is correct. Dan, do you want to sh- do you want to share your path? After sage and leaf, I thought this has to be green types of green. I was waiting for like Kelly and um, forest. Yeah, no. Um, Jade, the owner of the Minnesota North Stars, jaded me. Um, <laughs> you could stop that anytime now. Yeah, Jade Cargill could have been on here, and uh, but no. And when I when we saw. Bowman, I went like, what is this? What could this possibly be? And then the next one was high tops. I'm like, ah. Yes. So right in the middle of the Peaches guys submitted their guess, Dan, who had already submitted the incorrect guess in the middle of me speaking, simply wrote, damn it. And so I thought he was submitting a theme guess, which would also have been good. But anyway, well done to both teams. You did eventually get it. So thank you. Uh, After the second quarter, we have a score of, oh, wait a minute. Sorry. We have a lead change. Peaches, 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 I love you, has 275 points. And still very close behind them, Sagman Bennett, Robin Zoppenheim, and Taft, aka the stakeout, are at 250 points. And that will bring us to halftime. It is now time for the halftime show. There will be three entertainment questions pertaining to sports, with each question worth 25 points. Our halftime is more luck shenanigans, but we've all done this before and Eid hates it. So these are pre and post game Scott style where they are not actually pre and post games Um, for you, Philip, since you may not have heard this before, I'm going to give two clues that sound like they should be a pre and post game. They don't overlap at all, except for when smushed together, they make up a TV title. I'll I'll never, I'll I'll never forget that. Uh, uh, what was it? Fever pitch. That that was the. Uh, hey, um, I'll never forget it either. <laughs> fever, fever perfect pitch or whatever. But uh, it was like, see, it was perfect it was good, strangers. But, but, uh, Scott, it was, it was a, perf- it was pitch perfect, perfect strangers. I, I'll I'll I'll, yeah. I'll toggle now to start thanking you for for opening up a whole new world for me. So these are these oh, you know. Okay. All right. I, there it we was go. the first time. I, it was the first time I ever heard David like 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 audibly frustrated on any Correct. of these uh, uh, podcasts. And I was laughing <laughs> That's right. so hard. Well, writing these is just my therapy. So it's the, anyway, here we go. Question one, Hall of Fame pitcher whose autobiography was simply titled Me and the Spitter and currently with his sixth team in 11 seasons, this big man was one of three brothers to play basketball at Duke. We can check in. Check it in. I'm sorry. Yeah, check it in. <laughs> You're perfectly fine. All right. Sagman Bennett, Robbins, et cetera, have checked in. Peaches, peaches, peaches. You can talk it out. This guy seems to think that me and the spitter is an autobiography, but I know you and I know better because we've both been to Niagara Falls and we know. One of the Plumleys? Oh! Probably Mason. I think he's the one that stuck around the longest. So Hall of Fame pitcher is what we need. Me and the spitter. Who's that? That goes oh, with me. So wait, can you explain to me how this works again? Because I don't get it. Ask Scott. Okay. Tell you. Yeah, Scott. No, I have no idea how this okay. works. Okay. Okay. So it's, perfect it's, strangers, Mason Plumley. No, no, it's it doesn't work. It's two answers that are completely independent, mm-hmm. but but there's a middle section okay. that, is a, that is a TV title. Right. The name of a TV show. Oh, right. Perry Mason. So Gaylord Perry Mason okay. Plumley. All right. I got I got hold on. David's last episode. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You fired David yeah. like three or four times already. <laughs> I tried yeah, to make now, him the CEO of the podcast earlier. But so <laughs> now, now, now he has a, a second vote now for David. Oh Mayo, yeah. So, right. so we're gonna true. check in with Perfect Strangers. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Scott. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, Gaylord Perry Mason Plumley. All right. And law firm, appropriately. Got the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Gaylord Perry Mason Plumley. That is correct. Both teams are receiving points. All right. Question number two of our crazy halftime. At 22 years, 191 days on the last day of the season, 
youngest MVP in NBA history, and the last American male to win the U.S. Tennis Open, which they play in Queens, not Brooklyn. Check in. All right. The law firm has checked in. So peaches, 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 you can talk it out. Youngest MVP. Uh, I, I think I got it. Well, youngest MVP is Derek Rose. Yeah, right. So it would be Derek Rose and the Roddick, possibly. Rose and being the TV show, right? Because it's got to be Derek Rose. <laughs> He's about to say he, he hates this. So it's going to be Rose and. <laughs> was Rod, I, was uh, Roddick the last last male to win the U.S. Open? Last Probably. male? The last American male. Oh, <laughs> like, wait a I minute. Mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would think probably based on the other guys that have won it since then. Uh, does it work with Novak Djokovic? I don't think Eric so. Eric Rozak Djokovic. Rozak. <laughs> no, that's Kojak you're thinking okay. of. That's a um, different show. I don't think he's American either, so that wouldn't help. Uh, yeah, go. <laughs> uh, that's fine. It's better than anything I got. All right. We're going to check in with Derek Rosandy Roddick. And whoever from the other team? Yeah. So, so, uh, and before I give our answer, I, I, I'm just, I know this is an audio medium, but during this recording, I'm just enjoying watching like Eric, like seething during this round. Uh, Me too. it's pr- pretty, it's pretty entertaining, but, uh, uh yeah, we, we, Derek Rose and Andy Roddick and Roseanne is the TV show that forms the, the combination. So Derek Rose and Andy Roddick. And that is correct. And there was a subtle clue in there just in case you couldn't get to Andy Roddick, which was, that the U.S. Open is played in Queens. Andy Roddick is married mm. to Brooklyn Decker. That's a, that's an inappropriate. Queen Very much so. Easy there. All right. Question number three. Permitted for hitters in Little League High School and College Baseball, but not for major or minor leaguers. And current San Diego Padre, who on April 4th became the first person in history to get thrown out of a game for arguing a pitch clock violation. I think we're good. Uh, I think I finally figured this out, and I it? still hate yep. it. <laughs> yep, we're we're going to uh, check in. All right, the law the law firm is checked in, so I have to hear Eric curse my name a few more times. Go ahead, Peaches. So what is this? Is this aluminum or metal bat? Is it metal or aluminum? I, I don't. I don't. Whatever. Metal. Yeah. Bat Manny Machado. Ah, I see. Yeah, that works. All right, and the stakeout guys. What you have? That's beautiful. That's just beautiful. Aluminum bat Manny Machado. That is correct. I would have also accepted metal bat, but yes. Well done. Well done. Good job. All right, Eric, you made it. Once again, you hated the quarter. You didn't understand it initially, and you still got all three questions. So uh, at the end of halftime, we have Sagman, Bennett, Robbins, Oppenheim, and Taft at 325 points. And just ahead of them, we have Peaches, 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 Peaches. I love you with 350 points. Now on to the second half. We'd like to take a minute to invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at BenchwarmersTP. We also have a Facebook group for fans of the pod called The Bench. Join us there to comment on the latest episodes and share cool sports facts and trivia. If you'd be willing to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher, we'd greatly appreciate the support so that other people may find this podcast. Thanks. And that will bring us to our third quarter, which is going to be Lucky 7. Lucky 7. For this quarter, there will be three lists containing seven items. The team that is trailing coming into the quarter will choose the first list and attempt to identify the items on this list one at a time. If the team has an incorrect guess, the other team can attempt to finish that list out. The team leading at the beginning of the quarter will select the second list, and whichever team is trailing after the first two lists will get the third list. Each item is worth 10 points. Here we go. So list number one is going to be the last seven Heisman Trophy winners who were not selected in the first round of the NFL draft, okay? And just to be clear, because I know you're going to ask, this doesn't include, well, maybe you're not going to ask, this doesn't include Caleb Williams because he hasn't gone pro yet, okay? All right. Question number two, the most NBA points all time scored by someone with the first initial K. And list number three is most leadoff home runs in major league history. Now, just... One quick hint, just to sort of ground this one. Every one of these players played at least part of their career in this century. 
So it, there's no guys from the 50s and 40s on this list. Sagman Bennett, you guys are going to have the first decision to make which list you want. If um, we probably. don't take the Heisman Trophy one, they're going to take it. So we don't right. need to worry about that. I mean, I'd be fine with it. I, I think we could mm -hmm. figure that out. Yeah. But if you like the basketball one, that's that's fine. We can work on that one. Was that an official decision? Yeah, <laughs> let's let's do it. You ready to check in? Yeah, we can check in. All right. So let's hear your list of most NBA points all time scored by someone with the first initial of their first name, K. Uh, first one, we'll go with the number two uh, in history, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That is correct. Uh, next, we'll go with the number three uh, in NBA history, Carl uh, Malone. That is correct. Next, we'll do, I don't know where he ranks, like probably fifth, maybe fifth or sixth, Kobe Bryant. He's number four, and that's correct. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we'll do um, a pair of Kevins, uh, Kevin Durant. That is correct. He's number 13. Um, then Kevin Garnett. That is correct. He's number 19. Then th this is where we <laughs> this is where we were debating. Um, number, the sixth one we'll go with, because this is the one we feel safest with, is another Kevin, Kevin another McHale. Kevin. That is correct. All right, and then then the last one also <laughs> happens happens to be a Kevin uh, Kevin Willis. That is correct. You have not only run the you've not only run the list, but you've done it in order. So it was Kareem was number two, Carl Malone is number three, Kobe Bryant number four, Kevin Durant number thirteen, Kevin Garnett number nineteen, Kevin McHale number ninety two, Kevin Willis number ninety five. And now for no bonus points whatsoever, who's next on the list? Kiki Vandeweghe. Kiki Vandeweghe. No, he was uh, well. Oh. I, no, the next one on the list that I spotted was another Kevin, Kevin Love at 155. Oh, so, really? Interesting. Yes. Wow. Well I had done. Kiki Vandeweghe on, on my list. Yeah, yeah, we we were, we we were, yeah, Kiki Vandeweghe was the one that we were thinking that was going to be instead of Kevin Willis. Yeah. What did you guys have Khalid Reeves cuz he was on my list? Oh, I'm sorry. Kiki Vandeweghe is next. He's 118. Sorry. My bad. I say Kyle Lowry's got to be above and Kyrie Irving's got to be above Kevin Love. Well, a Clay Thompson, I thought would be Clay Thompson. I thought would be there. Yeah, but yeah. hold on. Yeah, you're right. I was wrong at number eight. I I wrote I wrote down Kevin Love. Sorry. At, at number one eighteen, we had Kiki Vandeweghe. Then we get Kyle Lowry, Kyrie Irving, and those guys are obviously still climbing. Right. So it would be a while before we got to Kevin Love. Sorry. Where's, yes. where's Clay Thompson? Clay Thompson. Where's Kerry Kittles? <laughs> that's the that's double. Okay, so back, he comes back to Villanova. Got to multiply his points yeah. by two. That's right. That's true. What that's I, a good point. What if I spell Karan Butler's raw name wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, I had I had Kenny, Kenny Anderson. High. I had Kenny Anderson, Kendall Gill, Kelly oh. Trapuka, Kermit Washington. It's, you know Kelly this Trapuka. <laughs> Kelly Trapuka. I could God, wow. I he's not even top, he's not even top five K's in Hornet's history. Kenny Kelly Smith. I like Kelly yeah, Trapuka, okay. but Kelly Trapuka sounds like somebody who should be in Urban Dictionary. That's just what it sounds like to me. Kelly Trapuka. <laughs> uh, 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 Kemba, Kemba has to be up there. Kemba, so yeah, he would have to yeah, be. Yeah, Kemba would be getting up there. Uh, Keon Clark, Kings. I don't think he's even the top walker, though. I think Antoine Walker might be. Anyway, all right. So I turn back to the other team, the Peaches guys. Which list would you like? I mean, well, Dan Dan called it, right? So you're, you're going to take the Heisman Trophy winners? Yeah, Maybe. I think we're good to go. Okay. In, in the name of efficiency. In the, in the name of efficiency, I can just give you all the names, and you can tell me yes. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Here we go. Bring it. Let's go. All right. So since they did it in order, I'm going to try my best. Troy Smith. That is correct. Jason White. That's correct. Uh, Crouch. That's correct. Winky. That's correct. Werfel. Yes. Ward. Yes. Toretta. That is incorrect. The last one is really? incorrect. But now, I like we were missing because you are confident, you've made me you've made me less confident. So, was that was I in order? Well, I don't, yes. I don't want to, I don't want to reveal anything until. Okay, I have confirmed according to Wikipedia that you have missed one. I won't. I don't want to say anything because I want to give them a chance to say something. I need to hear the list again. You mean you mean the list that they said? Yes. So so, Eric said, in order. I mean, this isn't the order he said it. I'm not professing yeah. whether this is the correct order. Troy Smith, Jason White, Eric Crouch, Chris Wanky, Danny Warfel, Charlie Ward, and Gina Toretta. Of those, Toretta was wrong. And by wrong, I mean he's not in the last seven. He, 
Eid is correct that that he was a Heisman Trophy winner who was not drafted in the first round, but he is incorrect in that it was one of the last seven. Um, when was Ron Dane a first round pick? He was a first rounder. That's when they still valued running backs. Carson Palmer was right. Yeah, I think he was number one overall. Yeah, yeah, yes, he was. Um, Ricky Williams obviously was. Leinert? No, Leinert was. Tebow. No, Tebow was like 20th for the Broncos. Okay. Lamar Jackson was the last pick of the first round. Johnny Manziel went first. I mean, not first, but went in the first round. He was first round, yeah. Baker was first overall. Kyler's first overall. Uh, Burrow first overall. Derrick Henry. Oh, I think that's it, Dan. Derrick Henry? When did he go? I think he may have been a second rounder. I don't think he was. I think. I think his big knock was he was quote unquote like, like flat footed and like seen more as like a bruiser, not a speedster. Uh, I think he I mean, dropped. If, if that's I'm, if that's if that's what you think. I mean, I I don't know. I can't remember where I, he went. I think he dropped because he was n- not of. I mean, that was that was at two thousand what God two thousand what. 15, 16, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, I need 16 was Jackson. That, 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 I, I that's the only one I can't, I can't place. I, I think that's, I said we go with if that. You think, if you think that's it, do it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go with uh, Derrick Henry. And that is correct. Yeah. Derrick Henry was a second round pick. I was actually amazed because Eric did get them in order. He just, uh, he just started one too late going chronologically backwards. It's it starts with Derrick Henry in 2015. And I actually had to rewrite the question. No, just, I had to add a word because I'd originally written his first round of the draft. I had to add NFL draft because Charlie Ward, of course, was a first round pick in the NBA draft. So yes, but Charlie Ward was seventh on the list. And the two prior to that were Gino Toretta, who Eric did mention as, as his seventh guess, And Ty Detmer would have been just before that. So the complete list is Derrick Henry, Troy Smith, Jason White, Eric Crouch, Chris Wenke, Danny Warfel, and Charlie Ward. All right. Well, that brings us to a very interesting situation because the score going into the third question is actually Sagman Bennett Robbins with 405 and Peaches, Peaches, Peaches with 410. So that means that our guest will get the third question, which is most leadoff home runs in Major League history. And I'm going to start your clock now. We'll check in. All right. Let's hear your list of the guys with the most leadoff home runs in Major League history. Okay. Uh, Ricky Henderson. That is correct. He's number one. Soriano. Correct. He's number two. And Biggio. He's number three. I knew one, two, and three. Uh, Curtis Granderson. Correct. Ian Kinsler. That is correct. And then the one that I was trying to make work, and I, I, I know he hit a lot of leadoff home runs, because he hit a lot of home runs in one in one crazy year, was Brady Anderson. That's incorrect. Uh, Brady Anderson is actually number eight on the list. If, if, so oh. so yeah, no 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 partial credit, but uh, well done anyway. That leaves one person on the list for the other team. I will tell you because I'm nice that they got at le- when I took down the list, they had one, two, three, five, six, and seven. One, two, three. So they're missing four. One, two, three, five, six, and seven. So they're missing four, Eric. So do we think Springer has gotten that high yet? I say out of all the names that we have left, uh, Springer would be my guess. I, I me too. I, I I agree with that. So I like just... Blackman as a sneaky guess, but I think Springer has more than Blackman. So the Blackman only had what a good twenty sixteen. I, th- I want to say he, but I I mean outside of that. He also switched between leadoff and batting second. Yeah, so that's so, the other thing with him. I'm going with like Springer. Springer. Yeah. We're going to check in with George Springer. And that is the last guy on the list. In fact, I took on this list, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. So it's even possible that Springer could be number two by now. He, when I took no, it down, he's, he's not hitting home runs anymore. Oh, uh, well, when, what Springer is, when I took down the list, Springer was at 52 in number four in fourth place. Biggio was just ahead of him at 53. And Soriano is at 54. Ricky is way ahead at 81. Uh, for the record, as we mentioned, Brady Anderson is number eight. Number nine on the list is Charlie Blackman. So well done to this to both teams. And you, at least in combined forces, ran all three lists. So at the end of the third quarter, we have the following scores. Sagman Bennett, Robbins, Oppenheimen, 
Taft are have gone out to a lead of 465 and peaches, 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 I love you, are at 420. And that will bring us to the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter, known as Put Your Fours Up. This quarter consists of four categorized questions that teams will wager up to 100 points each, not to exceed their current point total. So our fourth quarter, I got lazy with my with my category names. There's no hints in them or anything, so I just got lazy. So here we go. Question one is lucky seven. Question two, expansion success. Question three, it's better to receive than to give. And question four is street smarts. So lucky seven will pertain to NBA records. Expansion success will pertain to Major League Baseball. It's better to receive than to give pertains to NFL wide receivers. And street smarts pertains to general sports knowledge. I don't even know what to call it. Yeah. It's time for the teams to place their wagers. Now that the wagers are in, on to the questions. Question number one of our fourth quarter category is lucky seven. Though he played for four teams and only won two NBA titles, what NBA player holds the record for playing in the most game sevens in the playoffs? David, we will check in. All right. Peaches, 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 peaches. I love you. Has checked in. Sagman Bennett Robbins. You can talk it out for a few minutes. I, I say I I said I said Ray Allen. And that so he he played yeah he played Milwaukee no that, um no that doesn't work for teams either because yeah it does Milwaukee no Milwaukee Seattle Boston In Miami, Miami. I, are you sure you didn't play for the Cavs no no I don't think so you don't think so no I think he retired with Miami well if you retired with Miami didn't do the didn't think it influenced just do like a season with the Cavs I, I could go for that because he did. One he's only in he only did one title in Miami and and one in Boston he, and one in Boston none in Milwaukee and uh, I won't one in Seattle no tor- I won't torture Marcus yeah yeah because I was thinking of guys who were like on the Rockets uh, those the back to back years of the Rockets guys who were back to back years of the Pistons as like they're only two and and trying to think of guys who played for the Spurs and maybe had like two with the Spurs or one with the Spurs one with somebody else but I'm I was. Each time he's coming up, either against uh, not enough rings or or, or too many rings, and right. more than four teams or less than four. Teams. I mean, I so, bet you there's going to be a whole bunch of Celtics on this list, and yeah. they all played just for. Well, and the other thing with Ray Allen is that for most of his career, all four rounds were um, best of seven. seven games. Yeah, yeah, because for for a long time, the first round was not best of seven. And that that only came in to play like two thousand God two thousand six maybe yeah uh, I I think we're gonna have to go with Ray Allen here because yeah, I, I don't I, think I we're agree. gonna be able to come back on anything else so yep all right we're gonna check in with Ray Allen for one hundred all right and peaches I recently saw this because L Horford I think just played in this ten and then they said the record was Ray Allen at least I think it was Ray Allen maybe it was Paul Pierce now that I'm saying but I'm pretty sure Ray Allen makes more sense than Paul Pierce so we went with Ray Allen. For 100 points. Both teams are receiving their points. Yeah, I didn't see the Horford stat. Uh, I was trying to figure out if anybody had had caught up, and I Horford wasn't even on my radar. So when I saw the list, Ray Allen was number one with 11 of them. And then just behind him, I think, was Paul Pierce with 10. And Bill Russell, I think, with 10, which is amazing if you think about it. I mean, not that – not. I mean, Bill Russell – like you know, was in was in the finals every year and all of that, but he didn't have as many rounds to have seven games. So I mean, Ray Allen had two game sevens while he's with the Bucks. He had let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with the Celtics, I think, and then two or three with the Heat, something along those lines. So if Horford did ten, that would that would make sense too. So anyway, well done to both teams. Both teams are receiving their hundred points. Okay, question number two: expansion success. He finished in the top three in MVP voting while playing for an expansion team in just their second year. In his career, he hit home runs in the World Series for three different teams. He's also a four-time Gold Glove winner, four-time Silver Slugger winner, and even one manager of the year. Who is he? All right, we'll check in. All right, the law firm has checked in. Peaches, you can talk it out. I think it's Matt Williams. I, yeah, I, it, I mean, the manager of the year really dwindles this down yeah 
And I know he won manager of the year, and I know he had a home run for the Giants that Cleveland Guardians franchise and the Diamondbacks in a World Series. So there's that. And it would make sense that he would finish top three in MVP maybe in 1999. Yeah. I mean, it's going to have to be man- manager of the year. I mean, it's going to put you back in probably early 90s, late 80s. Right. Because Silver Slugger doesn't go, like, was it? 1980s. Yeah, that's not right. Exactly. Yeah. So anyone, yeah. anyone before that is out. And I don't and think great council. It's not Dusty Baker, right? It's uh, <laughs> so, I, I, think I, th- so. I, th- I think you're good. Good with that. All right. Yep. We're going to check in with Matt Williams for, for 100, 100 points. points. Okay. And a law firm. So, yeah, I mean, th- th- this is a, a true uh, team effort here. We are kind of just piecing together the different parts of the, of the question. And, um, what was thrown at me was the um, playing for an expansion team, top three in MVP. And and the reason it took me a little bit longer to get there and where Dan was, was dropping some knowledge on different parts of his careers. I'm thinking top three MVP and like early in the career for an expansion team, but this is at the tail end of his career with an expansion team. Um, and, um, but they had the, the gold glove, the silver slugger, and then the, the three different, World Series teams. I mean, we have the Giants, Indians, and Diamondbacks. We all said same one. Um, Matt Williams. I mean, one hundred. Both teams are once again receiving points, and you guys nailed it in all my flavor text. So you hit home runs for the Giants in the World Series in the in the Earthquake World Series in 89. 89, 97, and oh one. And then oh one. That's exactly right. And it was in ninety eight in the Diamondbacks' second year of existence that the MVP voting went to Chipper Jones, Jeff Bagwell, Matt Williams. That's so, 99, not 98, right? Sorry. Yeah, Chipper, Chip, they, yeah. Chip, Chipper won at 99. That's and right. 98 was the first season. The first yeah. season of the D-backs was 98, yeah. and in 99, he he uh, was, in, was in third in the MVP voting. Sorry, I think I said that wrong, but you're correct, Scott. All right, question number three, batting down the hatches. This one is really a David question. In the NFL's top 25 all-time receiving yards list, there are three pairs of players who attended the same school, and all three of these schools are current ACC schools. Now, one is Florida State, and it only works if you consider that Randy Moss was ever enrolled at Florida State. But I want to know who the other two schools are. We can check in. All right. Beaches, Beaches, Beaches have checked in. Law firm, give you a couple of minutes to talk it out. Yeah. So, so the fact that he wrote it the way he wrote it which mm-hmm. is that they are current ACC teams. To me, that means that at one point in time, they weren't ACC teams or the people and the people that made the list were not in the ACC. So Miami, you had, um, who'd you have for Miami? You had uh, uh, Reggie Wayne and Andre Johnson. Yes. Who, who I think are both top 10. Yeah. Uh, and then... Um, we started going through other ACC teams that were yeah. not in before. I came to Syracuse, and I'm fairly certain that not only uh, Marvin Harrison went there, but I'm pretty sure Art Monk went there, and I'm pretty sure he's still in the top 25. So, so I think, yeah, I think we should check in with Miami and Syracuse. Yeah, we'll check in for 100. Okay. And Peaches, what'd you have? Yeah, I, I I don't know why it took so long to get to Miami with Reggie Wayne and Andre Johnson. It wasn't the first thing that came to mind, but anyway. Um, and then it, Marvin Harrison, I, I, I for some reason, I had Art Monk going to Wisconsin for the longest time in my head. I'm like, no, he didn't. His son did. So, or that was L Toon. I'm sorry. So it was just, I was, I was all over the map. And then I'm like, Art Monk, Syracuse. It made sense. So Miami and Syracuse for 100 points. Both teams are receiving points. Uh, I'm really impressed. I tried to go slightly old school here. Uh, you guys had it exactly right. Marvin Harrison and Art Monk did both go to Syracuse. Art Monk is barely in the top 25. I'd give him about another five years, maybe 10, because he's right around 22, 23, and just where everybody's chucking the ball around. You know that they're racking up numbers much faster than Art Monk did because it took him you know, a very long time to get there. But anyway, all right, well done. So we are three for three so far. That brings us to the fourth question. Category is street smarts. According to a 2020 article in ESPN, there are close to 4,000 streets in the U.S. that are named for sports figures. 
and nearly half of those are honoring one particular sport with more than 10% of them in one state that isn't even in the top half of states by population. I want you to name the sport. David, we're going to check in. Okay. Peaches, Peaches, Peaches has checked in. Sagman Bennett, it's yours. All right. Um, Like I said, Philip, I'm going to have a really hard time getting pulled off of this. If this Mm -hmm. it's, I drive through Kentucky all the time when I go home to uh, when I go back to Minnesota, when I drive and there are an inordinate amount of streets there named after horses. So I think the answer is going to be horse racing. And I think the state is Kentucky. It, it fits all the boxes of the question. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go with that for 100. If, if you're all right with it, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. All right. We'll check that in. All right. And Peaches, what'd you have? Well, Dan, on my way to work every day, I drive by a cereal factory. And that has nothing to do with anything I said. But competitive eating came to mind. So I know there's a lot of streets named after hot dogs. All I said to Scott was, at least it's going to be something weird. Scott said boxing. I said horse racing or golf. Horse racing seemed the weirdest. to Definitely to Kentucky. This. Yeah, so made sense. We went with horse racing for 100 points. Both teams are receiving points, and you sussed out another David question. Well done. So, yeah, there are, I can't remember what the exact number was. It's close to 4,000 streets and that are named for some, something in sports. More than 1,800 of them, and this was as of 2020, so it could have gone up. More than 1,800 of them are in horse racing. The big drop-off to about 770 is golf, and then – all the way down to 320 for baseball and football follows after that in terms of individual athletes, if you will, secretariat is by far number one with 263 and four of the top five are horses. Number two is actually Dale Earnhardt who was at 101, Jeez. but then three, four and five are citation whirl away and sea biscuit. Oh, Alabama. Yeah. Sorry. Also North Carolina. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Well done. Yeah. I drive well, on Dale, it, it, Dale Earnhardt Boulevard all the time. Actually. Well, just just be careful. Does Dale? Yeah. Does it end I'll in a brick wall, Dan? Yeah. Just be oh, careful. Oh, that's allowed. Well, it ends in Kannapolis. Does that count? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably. Our game has come to an end, and here are the final scores: Peaches, 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 Peaches. I love you. Finished with a respectable 820 points. But our clipboard captains of the game, who are receiving the coveted Ryan Leaf Award. With 865 points is Sagman, Bennett, Robbins, Oppenheim, and Taft. All right, Philip, we'll let you go. <laughs> what have you got to say to us before we call it a night? Uh, not, not a whole lot. Just just having fun with with uh, playing here, challenging set of questions. But they were definitely, you know, well, obviously within reach since combined, we only missed like a couple in total. But um, uh, no, this is this is fun. I I, I definitely like like my uh, David uh, David. Uh, uh, round so it's uh it's good I, I, and and now i actually got to record when when i heard the uh david riffing on uh on uh scott uh halftime round with scott in attendance as well which which just makes it all the sweeter uh, i'll leave scott alone now so anyway <laughs> anyone else have something? <laughs> well i don't know i like i said it's just an excuse to to write more questions i, I i've never not remember to hit record on anything you know? that's true <laughs> but no, no, no I, I, multiple across multiple podcasts that's very true but I've never but not hit record notably scott i've only ever done that once and i don't ever stop hearing about that so you're you're, you're one mystery of post game i think i think you're opening yourself up it only takes and, one and, incident and, yeah and i was on that one as well yes you were you were yes the time i forgot to hit record it's all true all right well philip i want to uh Thank you for coming on and thank you for all your support for the podcast financially and just as a listener and for coming on to play. It's always great to see you. It's always great to play. This was fantastic. So um, I want to thank you and thank all of our Patreons. And on behalf of Dan and Scott and Eric Eid, I want to thank everybody for listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. And until next time, we'll keep the bench warm. Ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Stretch. Get on back there. They look up. You can put it on the ball. Yes. Yes. Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we'll see you 
tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Benchwarmers TP.